In this video, I want to look at the example of a car towing a trailer. So I have here a, a car uh, in blue, it's pulling and it's uh, accelerating in the direction shown. And this is a, a version of this problem is given in uh, uh, hundreds of physics exams around the around the world every year. And uh, and so what I, the question before us is to evaluate the magnitude of the contact force by the car on the trailer to the contact force by the trailer on the car. We know that they're in contact right here. What how do we compare the magnitudes between these two forces? Now before anyone would uh, have taken physics, almost everyone would say immediately that the contact force that the car exerts on the trailer is greater because it's pulling the trailer and accelerating uh, accelerating off to the right. In fact, many students, even after having studied this entire unit under the timed pressure of an exam would say exactly that same thing. Well, since the car is pulling the trailer, the contact force that the car exerts on the trailer uh, must be greater. But you know, and especially since I've, I've sort of uh, highlighted it with contact force by the car on the trailer, contact force by the trailer on the car, these are Newton's third law force pairs, which means they are exactly equal in magnitude. Opposite in direction, but equal in magnitude. The trailer exerts a contact force on the car exactly equal to the contact force the car exerts on the trailer. So that's uh, that's important to really solidify that you understand the Newton's third law force pair, but it also raises, I think, a, an interesting question for students seeing this the first time, which is, now how exactly then, let's say I believe you when, you, when, uh, when, I, when we say this, how exactly does a car pull a trailer? If they are exerting exactly equal forces on each other, then why is the system accelerating one direction? And that's a very interesting question because it gets into uh, the subtleties of a number of things that we've talked about so far. And so let's look at that question in some detail. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, apply Newton's second law to each of these objects. So the first thing is to choose one object. I'm going to choose the car. So choose one object. And my first object is going to be the car. And the next thing is to identify the forces on the car. So there's gravity on the car. I'll call that FG. What else is in contact with the car? Okay, there's a trailer. So I'll call this the the uh, so the trailer exerts a, for, a contact force on the car. So I will call that the uh, normal force, the trailer on the car. I'm going to say the the force is uh, it's all in this um, uh, horizontal direction, so it's perpendicular to the surface. So the trailer contact force is a normal force. Then there's the the only other thing in contact with the car is the ground. And so I'm going to, that's a contact force, and I'm going to break that into the uh, normal force, sort of the ground normal. I can break normal contact forces into normal and, and uh, friction, perpendicular and, per and parallel to the surface. So that's, I'll call that uh, uh, normal, um, I'll just, well, uh, normal of the ground on the car. And then I have the for force of uh, friction on the car. And uh, I could say for friction of the ground on the car and have three indices in the subscript, but the only friction is from the ground. So this notation is fine for me. So the force of friction uh, on the car associated with the contact force from the ground. All right, so now I have these uh, three, these, these are my forces. So I'm going to do a free body diagram. So 
Okay, normal force of the ground on the car, that's easy enough. Normal force of the ground on the car, that's up. Then I have the uh, force of gravity, that's down. I have the, um, um, the contact force of the um, uh, trailer on the car and that's pointing backwards. We get, and we know this, the trailer is, is pulling on the car. And so again, how does that fit into, let's, let's just take a second to make sure we understand how does that fit into our, um, our uh, contact model? And so you have to be a little bit careful about these things. And so if, if I want to look at the contact between a, a trailer hinge, really that's what this is, right? A hinge. This trailer has some tongue that's attached to the car. And so if I look at the, at the trailer, it's going to have some hinge that looks like this. And it's going to be attached to some, some connection to the car that, that looks like this, so that the, the car is trying to pull the trailer, the trailer is trying to, to pull the car back. And so if we look at this contact where the normal force is perpendicular to the surface between the agent and the object, and in this case the agent is the trailer, the object is the car, and here's that point of contact. It's going to point from the agent to the object in that direction. And so, so here's a case where to be able to match what's really happening in our physical system to our, co our models, our contact force models, and that sort of thing, we, we, this is, we really have to uh, uh, have a good visualization step so we really understand what's going on. Okay, well, if you think that's bad, it's going to get worse. So, here we go. There's the, that's how we can come up with the normal force. Fine. Now, where is the frictional force? Most students, when asked, just straight up, for this car going forward, what direction is the frictional force to the right here? Uh, they'll say the frictional force will go to the left. But exactly how is that possible? If I put the frictional force to the left, I in fact have no forces to the right, if I'll call this the positive x-axis. There are no frictional forces to the right. I have just proved by Newton's second law that the car cannot in fact tow a trailer, and if it tries, it will in fact accelerate backwards. So we know that doesn't happen, <laughs> and so that means we've done something wrong. All right, what have we done wrong? At this moment, the, to understand this, we're going to blow up, just like we did the hinge, we are going to blow up ex the point of contact between the wheel of the car and the ground. All right, I'm going to get a big picture, just like, uh, like we always should do when we solve problems. We need large amounts of blank scratch paper, so big pictures. So here's my ground. And, and here's my, I'm going to bring my, my tire, a big blow up of my tire. Now we know that the tire, when it hits the ground, it compresses a little bit. They've got a, this here and, and some, some, you know, the, as the, the rubber, it flattens a little bit when it hits the road and then curves back up. My wheels are not very round, <laughs> very very wobbly rubber there. Okay, but so here's my tire and here's here's where it attaches the ground. So what is physically going on in the uh in the car? So this wheel is attached to an axle which is attached to a motor. And that motor is it is attempting is exerting forces on that axle which is attempting to rotate this tire around its axis in this direction. So we know from our, con our model of the frictional force, our static frictional force, 
And that's what we're looking at here, right? As long as the, the car is not, we're assuming the car is not spinning, it's just going with its uh, normal acceleration, that if it's not spinning or slipping, that the surfaces between the car tire and the ground are at rest relative to each other. So we're looking at static friction. And our model of static friction says the, the static frictional force acts in the direction opposite to the direction the object would go relative to the agent if there were no friction present. So what would happen at, at this surface? Well, if there were no friction present, say this car was on ice so it was just spinning, that means the car would be spinning in that direction and this, the red surface, would be moving in that direction relative to the ground. And since the ground is the agent, the tire is the object, and if there were no friction, the object would be moving, the surface of the object would be moving that direction relative to the agent, that means the force of static friction is pointing and opposing that direction, which is in the positive x. And so that's exactly what we need. The force due to friction is pointing in the positive x direction. This is the force of friction on the car by the ground. And it is pointing in the positive x direction. And that's because the car is trying to rotate this tire and as long as it's not slipping, then if, since there are no absent friction, it would try to go this way, the force of friction then uh, compels it forward. Another way to, to think about it is that the car is exerting a force due to friction in the negative x direction as it tries to spin the wheel. And then the Newton's third law force pair, the force of friction, on the by the ground on the object then accelerates the object forward so this is the free body diagram so now if i just look along the x axis i have the force due to friction on the car uh and this is all in the x direction so i'll i'll just look at the x component I'll just look at the x components minus the normal force of the trailer on the car is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. Okay, so what's going on with the trailer? So let's let's go ahead again and and sort of blow up you know, this contact point here on the ground. So this is now the trailer. We have the ground. Uh, it's supposed to be flat, kind of flat. And we have a tire that comes down. It has some uh, um, flat where the wheel wheel flattens out and comes in in contact with the surface. And so now, what's happening? Now, for the trailer, the trailer does not have any engine. It has no motor attached to the axle, and so there's no internal drive trying to. Uh, move the tire on its own. There is there uh, that's that's trying to turn the wheel. So if we were in fact to to assume that there's no friction between these two surfaces, if there's no friction between these two surfaces, in what direction would this surface move? Well, since this is the trailer, it would simply slide it would move in the positive x direction if there were no friction at all because it's because of um the uh the force that's pulling it well i guess i didn't i didn't analyze my forces i didn't sum my forces first i guess i should have done that but let's let's for a moment look at the the uh the forces on the trailer so the forces on the trailer i guess should What are those forces? Okay, so we have, there's the gravity. 
f of g. There's the uh, normal, the the um, the the contact force of the the car on the trailer. Then there's the uh, the the ground normal. So we'll call that the normal force uh, of the ground on the trailer. And then there's the force of friction on the trailer. And if we were to then sum those forces, look, do a free body diagram first. There's the normal force of the ground on the trailer, the force due to gravity on the trailer, there's a normal force of the car on the trailer. It's equal in direction and opposite, uh, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction to the uh, uh, normal force of the trailer on the car. And then what's left is the frictional force of the ground on the trailer. And so that, that brings us to this picture. So it's because the object is being, uh, there, there's a force of the car on the trailer in the positive x direction, and there's no internal uh, motor that's trying to uh, turn this wheel. If there were no friction, then this wheel would just simply slide along the, the ground in the positive x direction. Therefore, the force of, of friction, and it's again static because if it's rolling, there's, there isn't a uh, uh, sliding between these, um, these surfaces, then the force of friction on the trailer is in the direction opposite to that motion, the direction opposite the motion of the object relative to the agent. So the motion of the object relative to the agent without friction would be in the positive x-axis. Therefore, the force of friction is in the negative x-axis, force due to friction. All right, so that gives us a um, a set of uh, equation in the x, let's just look in the x direction that we can use the magnitude of the force of the car on the trailer minus the force of friction of the ground on the trailer is equal to the mass of the trailer times the acceleration of the trailer. And we can compare that to this which gives us the frictional force of the ground on the car minus the normal force of the trailer on the car is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. I would, don't need vectors really. So what, what's going on here? So we know that these two uh, forces are Newton's third law force pairs so their magnitude is the same. And we also know that since the two objects are connected, their accelerations are the same. But the two uh, quantities that are very different are the frictional force of the ground on the trailer and the frictional force uh, of the ground on the car. And so the frictional force of the ground on the car caused by the motor attempting to rotate this tire while the rubber does not allow it to slip can be very, very high compared to this frictional force, which is just due to uh, the, this wheel. This wheel is simply rolling along the ground. So this frictional force can be quite low. So and the difference then between the, uh, the normal force and that frictional force, normal force and that frictional force, then is equal, provides the acceleration for the trailer, while it's a difference between this very large frictional force um, between the ground and the car minus the normal force of the trailer uh, on the car provides the acceleration of the car. All right.
So this is a this is a good uh, example to go through because it utilizes it first of all highlights one huge mi misconception and where a lot of students go wrong. They they think that because the car is pulling the trailer and accelerating forward, that the car has to exert a greater uh, force on the trailer, and that's just not true. Those are Newton's third law force pairs. But also, the understanding of how the car can pull the trailer at all uh, highlights how important these visualization steps are to be able to visualize what's going on at the hinge, to be able to visualize what's going on at the ground, and to be able to match what's physically happening in these systems to our models of the contact forces, normal and frictional together. And then we get uh, a proper understanding of the physics about uh, how a car can pull a trailer.